On Wednesday, Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown of Ohio, the ranking me member of the Senate Banking Committee, criticized Donald Trump for picking former Goldman Sachs executive Steven Mnuchin to be Treasury Secretary. Brown said, quote, President-elect Trump campaigned against big money's power in Washington and accused Wall Street and hedge funds of getting away with murder, but now he's picked a hedge fund manager whose Wall Street ties couldn't run deeper to lead the Treasury Department, which is exactly what this election showed the American people don't want. This isn't draining the swamp, it's stocking it with alligators, the words of Senator Sherrod Brown. Well, to talk more about the election of Donald Trump, his cabinet picks, and much more, we're joined by Cornell West, professor emeritus at Princeton University. During the Dem Democratic primary, he endorsed Bernie Sanders. After Hillary Clinton won the nomination, West made headlines when he endorsed Green Party presidential candidate Jill Stein. Welcome back to Democracy oh, Now!, Cornell. It's great to, to have you here. with us. I just thank God for democracy now because journalism is almost dead as we move into this neo-fascist age. And thank God you all are still willing to tell the truth. Well, your response to the election of Donald Trump and now the cabinet he is appointing around him. Well, I think he's already betrayed working people in terms of making sure, in his view, that Wall Street is in the driver's seat. And what I mean by that is, is that uh, in an emerging neo-fascist moment, you have the rule of big business, which is big banks and big corporations. You scapegoat the most vulnerable. It could be Muslims, Mexicans, gay brothers, lesbians, sisters, indigenous peoples, black people, Jews, and so on. And then you also have militaristic orientations around the world. And so you see the, ex ex the extension of the repressive apparatus as those of us who hit the streets, those of us who have been willing to go to jail, we've had to recognize we'll have more coming at us under Trump administration. But the crucial thing is, is that he had talked about his connection with working people, and it's clear that uh, the 1 percent are still running things. But you've also said, uh, uh, Dr. West, you just said that his administration uh, will be neo-fascist. Could That's you right. explain, what do you mean by that? Neo-fascist well, as opposed to fascist and what the two mean? Well, neo-fascist, is, it's an American-style form of fascism. And what I mean by that is we've, we've had a neoliberal rule from Carter to Obama. That neoliberal rule left in place a national security state. It left in place massive surveillance. It left in place the ability of the president to kill an American citizen with no due process. That's Obama. That was the culmination of the neoliberal era. Now you get someone who's narcissistic, which is to say, out of control psychologically, who is ideologically confused, which is to say, in over his head. And who does he choose? The most right-wing reactionary zealots, which lead toward the arbitrary deployment of law, which is what neo-fascism is, but to reinforce corporate interests, big bank interests, and to keep track of those of us who are cast as other, peoples of color, women, Jews, Arabs. Muslims, Mexicans, and so forth and so on. So this is one of the most frightening moments in the history of this very fragile uh, empire and fragile republic. So I want to talk about some of the uh, picks of uh, Donald Trump, mm. like, um, oh, president-elect Donald Trump's Treasury Secretary, Steven Mnuchin, deep ties to Wall Street, including working as a partner for Goldman Sachs, where his father also worked. Mnuchin's hedge fund also played a role in the housing crisis after it scooped up the failing California bank IndyMac in 2008. Under Mnuchin's ownership, IndyMac foreclosed on 36,000 families, particularly elderly residents, trapped in reverse mortgages. People would go to Mnuchin's home to protest outside as they were foreclosed out of their own homes. Mnuchin was accused of running a foreclosure machine. The bank, which was renamed One West, was also accused of racially discriminatory lending practices. In 2015, Mnuchin sold the bank for $3.4 billion, $1.8 billion more than he bought it for. This is what you call spiritual blackout. There's a level of callousness. There's a level of indifference toward poor and working people preoccupation with greed, and most importantly, lack of accountability, doing anything they can do unless, in the end, they get caught by the law. And, of course, oftentimes they've already 
disproportionately influence those who apply the law, those who are supposed to be regulating them. And so this is another instance of uh, Wall Street uh, run amok. I mean, I, I and so, some of us were very critical to Adolf Reeds and others, very critical of Geithner, Summers, the Rubin crowd, straight out of Wall Street when Brother Barack Obama moved into the White House. Summers, who you know well because he was president of Harvard when you were a professor Absolutely. there. Absolutely. And got a bit of an God altercation with him. Bless his soul. But uh, uh, so that you can see under the neoliberal rule, Wall Street's still in the driver's seat. We were hoping with Brother Bernie Sanders that we could bring the neoliberal era to a close. And by neoliberal, what I mean is when you see a social problem, you financialize, you privatize, and militarize. You get mass incarceration on the one hand, privatized schools. I know Sister Diane Rabbit's one of the great prophetic voices of our time in, in this regard. We'll talk about this later. And then you militarize, which is to say, drop bombs on seven Muslim countries and then wonder why Muslims are upset. So, or, or you drop bombs on innocent f children with U.S. drones and then wonder why the gangsters, the fascists coming out of the Muslim world are organizing. And of course, we got to be anti-fascist across the board. But this is, this, this is going to be the most trying of times uh, in our lifetime. There's no doubt about it. And at uh, 63 years old, I am thoroughly fortified for this fight, I'll tell you that. Well, given the people who voted for Trump, uh, and continuing with what you said, many have questioned how Trump, who after all is a billionaire born into a wealthy family, how did he become a working class hero so widely perceived among the people who voted for him as someone outside uh, of the American economic and political elite class? A significant number of those who voted for Trump were actually working people, middle class people who are looking for a way out, given the fact that they're losers under neoliberal globalization. And they, they, they tilted toward Bernie Sanders, but the Democratic Party and its neoliberal regime marginalized him and us. And so the only alternative is this pseudo populist billionaire with these narcissistic sensibilities and, and fascist neo-fascist proclivities, and he presented himself as caring for their situation. And so that economic insecurity, that economic neglect is very real. There's no doubt about that. And it's disproportionately white brothers and sisters, but they are suffering. And it was a cry of the heart. Unfortunately, given the right-wing populist and authoritarian orientation of Trump, he uses that kind of anguish to scapegoat. Mexicans, Muslims, and others, rather than confront the most powerful. 21 percent of those who voted for Trump do not like him, but they feel as if they had no alternative. And we have to keep in mind, 42 percent of our fellow citizens didn't go to the polls at all. Hmm. They've already given up on the system, you see. And so the system itself now is in such a chronic crisis. And we had said before the election that Trump would be a neo-fascist catastrophe. And, uh, and, and it's very clear from his picks that he's moving in that direction. 